Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday, and in this tutorial, we are going to be working with Apollo Server and Client, setting it up from start to finish in Next.js. And we're going to take the Next.js example from the repository, which is fantastic, but they don't really explain why they're doing certain things. They're just sort of like, here's the example, uh, good luck with it. So we're gonna take that and go through the whole thing from start to finish, but we're also going to add in TypeScript and Nexus schema at the same time. And this is with Apollo client version three, which is the latest and greatest. So if we go down to the terminal, we'll create a brand new Next.js app using npx create next app, and we'll give it a name of Apollo Next.js. So this will just take a second to install all of the packages. With the packages installed, we can CD into the folder, and then we'll just add the three different packages we need for this example. So yarn add Apollo client, that will be the v3 one, Apollo server micro, and I'll explain why micro in a sec, and then also Nexus schema to help us build our GraphQL types and resolvers with a code first approach. So we'll just wait for this to install. I think it will be pretty quick. There we go. So here's our Next.js app. We've got our pages that has an API folder and we've got hello.js. So this is the one we're going to replace and call it graphql.typescript. Let me take a minute to talk about AppSignal who's partnered with me on this video. In this bare sightings application I built, which uses Next.js with Apollo on the client and also on the server, I just finished integrating it with AppSignal. So if I pop over to my dashboard, I can start to see information right away about this application, even when I'm just developing locally. Things like its throughput, response time, etc. But one really neat thing about integrating AppSignal with Next.js is that you get access to the Web Vitals dashboard, which reports on all the different lighthouse scores like time to first byte, first contentful paint, etc. So you can try to give your users the best and optimal experience. If you'd like to try out AppSignal, it is free for the first month, and if you use the coupon code LEE, L-E-I-G-H, you'll get 10% off for your first year. Now let's get back to this tutorial. And the first thing we're going to build is the back end, because then we have a front end that can sort of utilize what's already going on in the back end. And what we want here is to create a new instance of the Apollo server. So we will import Apollo server from Apollo server micro. So the reason micro, this is sort of a framework that Next.js uses for their server side routes. So this one is actually official by Apollo and it's set up to already work with sort of the inputs and the outputs that you're expecting to receive within Next.js. So we are going to create an instance of the server. So server is equal to new Apollo server. And we need to give our server a schema. So we don't have that yet, but we'll come back to that in a second. The next thing we need to do is receive a handler from this server. So it will receive the incoming requests and then respond with the JSON response. So we say server create handler, and we need to tell it what path that the requests are going to be coming in on so that it can parse out the incoming uh, requests correctly. So because we're inside API GraphQL, that is what our path will be. And then we can export this as the default. So export handler. But if we were to do this as it is, it would sort of time out indefinitely. And that's because we need to add this one extra export. So export a config. And the config will have API body parser false. So without this, it won't work. And we basically need to tell Next.js, like, no worries, I got this. Do not parse the body um, because Apollo handles that itself. So schema, this thing's giving us an error. So why don't we import the schema from SRC schema? So this doesn't exist yet, but I am going to go create it. So folder SRC, and inside of here, we will create schema.ts. And before we get too far, um, this import won't even work until I configure uh, TypeScript correctly. So here's like a little bit of a trick. If you just start Next.js, it's gonna freak out and tell you you have to install TypeScript. So we paste that in. 
And then as soon as it's finished installing that, we'll just start it up again. And the first time it boots the app, it will create the tsconfig file. So we can just pause that for now. But now we have the tsconfig, and why do I want this at this point? Because I can define the base URL and tell it sort of where to start parsing from. And by putting in base URL of dot, uh, dot meaning the current folder, so the, the root of everything, this import now will work correctly. The only reason it's failing is because um, it's not actually exporting anything uh, yet from this file. So we need to go create a schema. So we are going to import a couple things from Nexus schema, which is the um, code first um, GraphQL server approach that I've sort of enjoyed working with lately. I don't want to keep my types defined here and my resolvers defined here. I like to do it all in code and the um, GraphQL types will be an artifact of the code that I'm working with. So we'll import make schema and we need another one called query type that we'll use in a second. So our schema, this is make schema and you need to provide some types to it. So now we define types and that will be for now nothing, but we'll define our first type, which will be the query um, root node. So const query is equal to the query type and the definition for this, um, for the query type, the, the root of our GraphQL query, we'll have one field, which will be a string and we'll just return my name. So return Lee Halliday like this. So with our query type defined, we can pop this into the types object. And now we're providing this into the schema. And the last thing will be to export this. So export schema. You know what, we can just skip that and say export const schema here. And hopefully this thing is all cleared up now. Uh, there's no more error. It now knows that I'm going to be receiving this schema here. So with that in place, we should be able to start up our app and hop into the uh, GraphQL playground and see if it works. So the homepage, I think it's still just the default one, but if we go into API GraphQL, it's already set up here because I had been playing with this previously, but I can execute my query and the backend's responding with the data that I um, told the query resolver um, to return with. So the backend is done. We've set up uh, Apollo server using Nexus schema, and now it's time to move on to Apollo client on the front end. So the next step that we're going to do is um, go and create a file called Apollo. Dot TS. And we're going to be basically defining uh, the Apollo client in this file. But why don't we start with where this Apollo client is actually used? It's actually used for the first time in this special underscore app component that we are going to rename to TSX. And whenever you do that, you need to pause the server. It freaks out. See, it's, it's already freaking out. Doesn't know where to find this file. Okay. So app.tx is a special component that wraps around every single page level component that you have in Next.js. And it receives the page as this component here. And it right now it's just returning it. But what we can do is wrap the Apollo provider around this. So we will import Apollo provider from Apollo client. And Apollo provider is a component that should go around your entire sort of application, any part of it that wants to use um, Apollo. Oh man, there we go. But Apollo provider wants to receive an instance of the client. So that's what we need to give it. Client is equal to client. And we need to get, get access to this instance. So we're going to say here, const client is um, use, what are we going to call this? Use Apollo. Just like this. And this function does not exist, right? 
So we need to import this, use Apollo, from SRC Apollo. Okay, so this is reasonably happy for now. It's telling me that I haven't exported use Apollo function yet, but that's to be expected because we have to go create it. So inside of this function, we are going, or this file, we are going to import a few things from Apollo client. So we are going to import the Apollo client itself. So from Apollo client, and we are also going to be importing um, in memory cache and this other thing called normalized cache object that's just going to be used for helping our TypeScript definition. And we'll start at the top, sort of right out here, not in a function at all, to create an instance of the Apollo client. And actually, sorry, I lied. We're not creating an instance of it. We're creating a variable that we'll eventually put it into, but we'll start it out by just leaving it undefined and we'll tell it what type of data that it is going to have. And it is going to have an instance of the Apollo client. And the reason we import the normalized cache object is to tell it what type of cache that it's going to have. So it's actually going to be using in-memory cache, but this is sort of a generic one that you can use that represents sort of any type of uh, normalized cache that you can use in Apollo. So next things first, or next thing, why don't we create that use Apollo function? So we'll export it. So export use Apollo. like this, export function use Apollo. Okay. And what we want to do in here is we want to return um, a copy of the Apollo client. So we are going to return and instead of sort of um, just creating an instance of it right in here, we're actually going to call a function called initialize um, Apollo, just like this. And before I get too far, I'm sort of missing something. So in the example, you'll see that in the app.tsx, it's actually taking page props and it's passing in something called initial Apollo state, just like that. So we're passing some initial Apollo state to our use Apollo function. So initial state and we'll be passing this in to initialize Apollo that we'll create in a second. But because um, if this function's called repeatedly, we don't want to reinitialize if we have the same initial state, what we can do is use, um, use memo from React to sort of memoize this call to initialize Apollo and put it into a variable called store. So use memo and when the data has changed, call initialize Apollo, which we'll def define in a second. And what data are we looking to see if it changes? The initial state. Just like that, and we'll return the store. Cool. So we need to go create initialize Apollo right now. So we're going to export this as well because we'll use it elsewhere as you'll see in a second. And this will be initialize, initialize Apollo that will take in the initial state. And if you don't pass it, we'll just say null for there is none. And inside of this function, what we're going to do is actually set up sort of like a temporary variable. And we'll give it a name of Apollo client. And it is going to be equal to either the Apollo client, if we've already put an instance in this variable, but if we don't have anything in there yet, we'll use the nullish coalescing operator. So it's basically like look in here first, if this is sort of nullish, go to the right side of this operator. And what we'll do is create a new instance of the Apollo client. And hopefully it will make more sense shortly why we're doing this step. And part of it is because we have to differentiate 
between whether we're running on the server or whether we're running on the client. Because we're building this to support uh, server-side rendering or in Next.js terminology, server-side generation. So why don't we just pause this function just like this for a sec and let's go define our create Apollo client. And if you look at the example um, on the Next.js examples directory, I'm literally writing it exactly as they have it here because it's the cleanest approach I've seen yet. And um, in Apollo client two, there was this insane one that I actually never understood, but this one I can sort of wrap my mind around. So create Apollo client. We want to return a new instance at this point of the Apollo client. And whenever you create a new instance of the Apollo client, you need to give it, um, in this case, three things. So the first thing is you need to tell it whether it's running in server-side rendering mode or not. And the way we can determine that is by checking if there's a window object available. So what we'll do is just say type of window is equal to undefined, just like that. And now we need two other things. We need a link, which we'll set up in a second. We'll just set it to null for now. And we need a cache. So cache will be an instance of this in-memory cache. In new uh, in-memory cache like this. So in-memory cache, uh, cache in general in Apollo is basically where it stores the results of queries that are run. And this is really important in server-side rendering, especially because if we run a query on the server, when it finally renders in the client, we don't want it to have to rerun a query that it had already done on the server. So we're basically going to take whatever cache was run on the server and initialize our client copy of Apollo um, with that same information. And that's what this initial state is that's being passed sort of from the page props to use Apollo and we're sort of passing all the way down and we'll use it more shortly right here below. And what isn't it liking about this? Boolean is not, oh, it's because it's not SSR, it's SSR mode, there we go. Okay, so we need a copy of link, right? And this is normally where you tell Apollo how to go execute GraphQL queries. Are you gonna do an HTTP request? Or are you going to use a local schema that you have similar to the one we created here? Because when you're running in the client in the browser, we need to go across the internet, make an HTTP request. But if we're already on the server, we can just reuse the same schema. So we're not having to make an extra HTTP request, which would just slow things down. So we're going to create a new function called create is isomorphic link. Isomorphic meaning it's either going to be running on the client or on the server. So function create isomorphic link. And in here, we're going to have an if statement. And we want to check if we're on the server or we're in the client. So type of window equals 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 undefined. So that means server, else meaning client. So why don't we just do the client one first? So we want to create a new instance of HTTP link and return it. So HTTP link, but where do we come, where do we get this from? Cause I didn't import it up here. And there's a reason for that. We're actually going to do a require statement right here. And we'll grab HTTP link using this require statement. So require Apollo client um, link, HTTP. So why the heck would we do this? And it took me a little while to figure this out. I think Next.js has some sort of parsing that they do when they're building your application. And they look for this text here, I believe. And because it's in an if statement, they sort of know that if we're in this statement, we're on the server. And if we're here, we're on the client. So that means they would want to include anything required in here in the webpack build that's going to be sent down to the client. Whereas anything that's on the server branch of the if statement doesn't need to be bundled into that webpack client. I tried to get fancy when I was playing around with this to put this into a function called on server, which would return me a Boolean because I thought, oh man, that's so smart. I'm not going to have to repeat this every time I want to know if I'm on the server. 
but it actually didn't work and it caused me problems. So I think they must be looking for this. I could be wrong. Tell me if I am, but, um, so back to HTTP link, we need to tell it, uh, what URL our GraphQL API exists on or at. So we tell it URI just graph API GraphQL, which is the same one we had set up, um, here, but the reason for it is because that's where it actually exists. So why don't we do the server setup right now? So here we're going to use something called schema link, which we will require from Apollo client link schema. And to use schema link, you need a copy of your schema, meaning this thing right here. So we will import that const schema equals require schema. And then we can return a new instance of the schema link, passing it in the schema. Cool. So we've created our create isomorphic link, which means our Apollo client now correctly has a link. And now let's finish off this initialized Apollo. So inside of this underscore variable, we either have an existing Apollo client or we'll create a new one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look to see do we have any initial state? And we'll, we'll talk about where that would actually come from in a second. We haven't touched on that yet. But let's just assume this will be called sometimes with initial state. And if we do receive initial state, we want to go into that Apollo client, access its cache, and restore it to the initial state, just like this. So after this if statement, we're going to check if we're on the server again. So we'll just say if type of window is undefined, we are going to return Apollo client. So what this means is that on the server, we are always returning a new version of the Apollo client because never are we assigning anything to this Apollo client without the underscore variable. And that's because every server request, we want a new instance so that my user's request and some other user's request, their caches don't conflict. They're not shared. Imagine um, my bank account is in your cache and now you're viewing my bank account. That'd be a disaster. So that's why you always want to return a new instance of the Apollo client. So if we get past this if statement, we know that we're on the client and we want to, at this point, set this Apollo client variable with a value. So what we can do is we can say Apollo client is equal to, and what we can do is again, just use the nullish coalescing operator to say, if there's a value in Apollo client, use it. We want to reuse it. It doesn't hurt to reassign it to our, to ourself. But if it doesn't have a value, this is where we want to take the Apollo client, just like this. Um, and moving on, we just want to return an instance of the Apollo client. And at this point, you could use the underscore or the non underscore version. They have the same value in it, so it doesn't really hurt anything. But at the end of all of this, like 50 lines of code, we finally have a client that we can pass to the Apollo provider. So what this allows us to do now is to go into our home page and we'll change it to TypeScript. TSX. We will remove everything here like that. And it's time to perform our first query in the client. So we're going to import two things, use query and GQL from Apollo client. And we use GQL to define our query, the actual GraphQL query that we want. So we'll just call it my query and it will be equal to GQL. And we'll say we're going to perform a query named my query that pulls the name down. And what we can do here is we can um, say const um, something is equal to use query my query. So the one we defined above. And this gives us back two things or well, many things, but gives us the data, it gives us a Boolean for loading, it tells us whether there's an error or not. 
why don't we just go with these two for now? So if loading, just return a span that says loading. That means if we get down to here, we know we have data. I'm just gonna get rid of this head for now and let's get rid of everything. So we don't need styles either. So inside of this fragment, or we could do a div, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna output whatever's in data. So here's a little trick. You can stringify the data, but if you do that, I'll show you in a second. So why don't, it's already started. Go to the home page. Hopefully it works. Loading. So there we go. We get um, this here and it showed loading for a split second. If you pass in null as the second argument, which is a replacer that I've never actually used in my life, in the third argument, you can pass the number of spacing to, um, to use when it's sort of prettifying um, JSON output. And here you can see that it's now outputting sort of uh, brace, indented brace. So it formats sort of whatever you're working with. So we're almost done. So if I reload this, maybe hard to see on video, but for like a split second, it says loading. And if we go into the network tab and search for uh, GraphQL, you'll be able to see that it's making a GraphQL request to our server. That means it's happening client side in the browser. Now we want to support server side rendering as well where when the page loads, if it already has all the data it needs, it won't actually have to do that HTTP request. And the way we'll do that is by exporting an async function that's called get static props. So this is a special one used by Next.js that only ever runs on the server. So in here, we want an instance of the Apollo client. And we'll get that instance by importing it from, um, we're going to import the initialize Apollo function from src Apollo, initialize Apollo, just like that. So with our instance of Apollo, what we're going to do is perform any queries that we want um, to grab data for, for server-side rendering. So what we can do is await uh, Apollo client to execute a query. And the query that we want was called my query. So what we're doing here, see, we're not actually putting the response inside of data like this. We're just sort of awaiting it. And the reason for that is because we're populating the cache, the Apollo in-memory cache, with the results from this query that's being executed on the server. So now what we can do, and the response from this function, is that we can return props that when rendered in the client, those will be passed as initial props. So remember here, we had page props, and we're expecting initial Apollo state. This will be what we're returning from this server side get static props function. So we'll return the initial Apollo state that we will grab from the Apollo client cache.extract. So just to step through this again, server side, this thing runs. We get Apollo client. Because it's server, it's always a new instance. We execute any queries we want it to have inside of its cache and then we return that cache as the initial Apollo state. Because this component is run within the special underscore app, we have access to the page props initial Apollo state that we pass to our uh, use Apollo function, which generates a new instance of, of Apollo and restores the cache in the client to whatever the server had given us. So that's a mouthful, it's crazy, but I'll show you the result of that, if everything worked correctly. I can reload the page, and notice that I still have my data here, 
but it did not do an HTTP request to the server. So if I were, for example, to just come back here and give this a different name, refresh the page, because it doesn't have that initial, um, what was it called again? Initial Apollo state, it had to go and go back to the server to ask for more data. But if we provide that initial Apollo state, just clear this out, it's able to render um, without having to go back to the server again. So you're all about sort of saving work that your code has to do. So that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just going to link to, no, I'll push this up in a repo because we did it with TypeScript and we did it with Nexus Schema, but I will also link to the official Apollo example, sorry, the official, official Next.js Apollo example so that you can use that um, as well as a reference. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.